Hello everyone, my name is Sam Robbins from the Open Culture Foundation. I'll be translating this presentation that was originally given by Liu Xiaoyun, uh, who is a PhD student in the Department of Biomechatronics Engineering at National Taiwan University, and an environmental engineering technician at Chengyang Environmental Engineering Technical Firm. Uh, so I'll be giving this presentation, but I'm giving it on behalf of Xiaoyun, so I'll be using I, the first person, and we, uh, but I'm, I'm not referring to myself. Okay. So the presentation is on water resource management and sensing. So I'll be talking about open source water boxes and their, and their uses. So the first question I want to ask and is, you know, why make water boxes and, you know, what's the point? So the story starts in around 2016. Um, and by that time, environmental devices such as air boxes made by the uh, last community here in Taiwan or the loc location aware sensing system, and we'll talk about them more later, had already started to see some positive results, and the data they collected had already started to be accepted by the local environmental protection authorities. So by this time, this last community was already a successful example of open source community collaboration with civil society and the government. And then uh, they agreed to make around 3,000 water boxes uh, for the government. And they also started experimenting with the other uh, systems, such as flood detection systems. At the same time as this, I was also implementing a plan on behalf of the Taitung Municipal Government's Environmental Protection Bureau because they also wanted to install low-cost environmental sensors. Because at this time, these uh, water quality sensing devices were becoming increasingly popular in Taiwan and there was a lot more research going, uh, going into them. So there was this popular story at the time about a university student who developed an automatic water quality monitoring sensor to protect a local river. So what he did is he installed a sensing device, a water box, on a drone, which may, meant it could be um, operated remotely and it could be used to gather uh, water data in areas that were difficult to access on foot. And also his system was able to produce much more real-time granular data than uh, existing systems. So the environmental, the Taichung City Environmental Protection Bureau saw this and they hoped that they could create a similar device that was able to monitor water drainage from local factories because they feared that there was illegal water drainage activity going on. Um, but they didn't have the data for it. So they invited us to produce a simplified water monitoring system. So this is the request and the demands that were provided to me by the uh, municipal government at the time. So they were trying to improve the frequency of data collected while also achieving lower costs to monitor many river sections at once and use this data to determine whether illegal water drainage activity was taking place and thus increase the efficiency and reduce the cost of their audits. And here's the desired capabilities for their device. They wanted to be able, they wanted to, be able to measure pH level, conductivity, and water temperature. They wanted a system in which data could be saved in an SD card every five minutes and then uploaded over the internet, so sent remotely. They wanted to be able to determine a standard water quality for the water and then get automatic notifications anytime the water dropped below that level. And they also wanted a device that was water resistant um, with waterproof circuit board and a waterproof box that was able to operate for at least one week at once. After about three months of development, I completed the first version of the design using the Arduino development environment system. This is also the first Internet of Things device I ever made by uh, myself. Uh, so here's a little bit about water box number one. So the measurements, you can see the battery life could last for about three days. I had modules able to provide the required uh, services as specified by the government. Uh, and this is the first thing I came up with. And this was developed relatively quickly. Uh, the data couldn't be transmitted over the internet, but it was stored regularly in an SD card. So if we had the SD card, we could read that data and check the trends in the water. So this is some of the data we produce. So the red line in this graph represents the legally uh, the legal minimum for pH quality for water as determined by the Taichung municipal government. And we were able to use it in a river to see uh, how the pH was changing over time in a single day uh, and track that against factory activity. So at eight in the morning when the factory was beginning to operate, we can see a quick drop in uh, the pH of the water. 
in response to the factory opening. And at around 1 p.m. when there was a lot of rain, the pH activity, uh, the pH of the water dropped again. But interesting, at night, there was a very sudden and very significant drop in the pH of the water. And it seems that this is when the factory took the opportunity to discharge untreated water uh, in the middle of the night. So this data was able to track the emissions of the factory and its water drainage um, when at intervals and time frames when, you know, human operated audits were just not possible and produce data much more frequently. But the problem is that this is just one factory. And um, this is one factory in one river. And there's not even one factory on a single river. And this is just one part of Taiwan, right? So the, the image below is the device we installed and the data we are collecting. But this picture above is a billboard in a river that said fish, fish in this section of the river are not suitable for consumption. Uh, and this is a really amazing sign to see. So what this means is it's not, you know, a ban on fishing in this area. It's not saying, you know, you can't fish these fish. It's saying that it's unsafe to eat the fish here. You know, what kind of situation would lead um, to a situation where fish are unsit, unfit for com consumption? Because Taiwan is known for being rich in natural materials. But it's actually relative. The resources here for water management and water protection are actually fairly scarce. So... A low-cost sensing device can only observe one factory. How many devices are needed to measure an entire river to understand where the pollution started? This is where I started to get involved with the LAST community, an open source community, as I mentioned before. Uh, I got an invitation from LAST, and they were trying to redesign the previous results into a water box and make the design uh, open to the public using open source. And this way, that we, we hope that more people will be able to make their own water boxes and that we could scale out and you know, aim for a much larger rollout. Uh, and our new water box, water box, the second version was first revealed in the 2018 last end of year report. So during the redevelopment, we took the opportunity to think, well, maybe we can try to use a water box that's able to meet a lot more diverse range of <clears throat> requirements. So not just measuring pollution in a river, but also use for agriculture and aquaculture and environmental regulation and irrigation. But as this graph shows, What's necessary and what's important in each of those areas is quite different. So to create one device capable of doing all those things is quite difficult. This said, because we were using open source, there's still a scalability in the hope that people can design, you know, improved or expanded upon devices based on our design. So the assembly destructions, the bill of measurements, the firmware code, the 3D printing file, the circuit design and overall structure of our device are all made open source and are all accessible through the last database. The product is licensed through an MIT license uh, and incorporates our previous experience to make a new device. So this is Waterbox 2. There's more options for use, a new firmware structure, it's easier to set up, it's solar powered, it's smaller in, in its dimensions, it's easier to access data, and it's producing open access data. A partner with the last community who were involved in the manufacturing of this device, called Taiwan's Maker Circle, uh, also participated in designing the circuits. And because of the assistance of professional partners, they were able to release a version of this product for commercial purchase, commercial purchase already. That said, although it's available for purchase, it's currently out of stock. So it sold out very quickly and we weren't able to manufacture that many. At the, pro at the present, we're still in the process of verifying and testing the water box in different fields and the design is constantly being improved. So I want to share a little bit about one trial run of this product at the 2019 Presidential Hackathon, which is a government-sponsored hackathon event here in Taiwan. And our hope was to install our water box in major rivers in Taipei City here in Taipei, here in Taiwan. So a bit of context for this, uh, there's these common occurrences known as mass fish deaths here in Taiwan, which just like they sound is instances where suddenly lots of fish turn up dead in a specific location. Uh, and it's very common in Tamsei River, which cuts across Taipei City and New Taipei City. Uh, but it's really hard to figure out why these mass fish jets are so common. Um, and although the river quality is going to change with tides and rainfalls, it's really hard to get a sense of the actual water quality trend. 
and it seems to be related to excessive factory emissions, but we, we're not sure because these events happen very short term and are a response to very high uh, intensity activity. But the problem is the existing data by the Environmental Protection Agency here in Taiwan only releases data once a month. Uh, so with data once a month, you really can't capture those short term trends and really figure out what is happening at that moment. So we hope with our water boxes, which can produce real time data at much shorter intervals, we'll be able to make up for the lack of information. So I just want to give a sense of how common these mass fish deaths are and how much of a problem it here is in Taiwan. Because basically, if you type in mass fish death in any year of the last few years, you'll find a lot of news stories. So these events stir up a lot of public attention, a lot of public outcry. But without good data and really a good sense of exactly what's happening, there hasn't really been any significant effort to uh, solve this issue or figure out really what's going on. And again, I want to stress that with data only being released once a month, we just don't know what's going on. Uh, so if you look at the available data released by the government, there's some things we can, ch we can learn about and some things we can figure out already. So for example, during a mass fish death event in 2020, we can see that the max temperature in the region exceeded 30 degrees for eight days straight. So that seems to give us some indication of what's going on. There was a similar event back in 2019 or 2018, um, and this is the data from that period. So it's, it's really a shame that uh, with the data being released so infrequently, we really can't get a good sense of what's going on. So for example, if we look at the level of dissolved oxygen in the water, um, before and after these events, there seems to be no change. Everything seems to be normal. If you look at the data as exists, there's no issue. There shouldn't be any fish deaths because monitoring before and after the sudden uh, and intense pollution activity, there's no change in, oxy in oxygen, dissolved oxygen in the water. And when there's a continuous high temperature environment uh, happening in a short period, the trend in water quality cannot be observed quickly. So in 2019, in order to have a better understanding of the change in water quality in, in Dan Trey River, the team involved in this hackathon installed a water box in Taipei Island on the Zhongxing Bridge to record water quality every 10 minutes. And the information we, published, uh, we obtained was published in the hackathon. So it's hoped that in addition to hyd uh, hydrometeorological data, we can measure the, the correlation between temperature and water quality and establish the change in the water ends of what's happening. So what's good about our device is because we can measure temperature and pH levels, amongst other things, we can really try to figure out uh, at the micro level every 10 minutes really what's happening and try to get to the bottom of these mass fish death events. Uh, because the water quality, we realize, is changing quite frequently and that things are happening very quickly. Um, but this is not just one river and this is not just one event. So although we were able to generate some data that gave an indication about why things were happening at one point. This is an issue uh, that's happening across Taiwan that we hope we can scale out. So the Water Resource Agency is in charge of 26 rivers, two inner city waterways, and 92 creeks for a total of 116 waterways in Taiwan. Uh, and these fish death events are happening outside of Taipei. Uh, for example, this was one story that happened in Taoyuan. Um, and again, these other locations similarly don't have good granular data. So we're hoping that we can uh, install water boxes at a much larger scale and really try to figure out what we're doing. And of course, when we install these water boxes and use a system, uh, we'll have more open data because that's what the last community is involved with. And although we're only doing a small trial run, we've already shown the effects of releasing open data. So we installed a water box, we uploaded the data, and from that, we've already had, we've already begun to create an interactive map of the existing open data sources and uh, the government has released a water quality app based on our data amongst others. So we're hoping we can do this at a much larger scale and continue to work in this way that's open data, civic tech, and involves public-private collaboration. So I hope that uh, we can expand this and continue to grow and continue to develop through public-private collaboration um, and allow more citizen scientists to get involved and allow more people to be accurately aware of water quality in rivers and wa all water sources in Taiwan. Finally, I would like to share with you a sentence that is often heard in the last community. Last is yours. These environmental quality 
the environmental these environmental issues are everyone's and everyone needs to work together to solve them. Thank you for listening.